Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. Uh, I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event, webinar, webcast, online show, uh, I don't know, we could be whatever. Um, but we are here every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time covering a variety of library topics um, and activities. The show is free and open to anyone to watch, both the live show here Wednesday mornings and the recordings, which are posted onto our website. Um, we do a mixture of things here, presentations, book reviews, mini training sessions, interviews, uh, basically anything. If it's library related, we are happy to have it on the show. Uh, we have guest speakers that come in, and we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations. And today we have a mixture of that. Uh, once a month, usually the last Wednesday of the month, we have our Tech Talk with Michael Sowers, who is our Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Hi, Michael. Good morning, Krista. And he comes on once a month to talk about more, generally more techie-related things, tech news of the month, anything interesting that's happened, and... Um, pretty much every time brings on a guest. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> and this week we have with us uh, J.D. Thomas, who um, is uh, going to talk about WordPress and SEO management and a whole bunch of stuff that I don't know anything about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, something that I know about okay. WordPress. You know, sorry. I know yeah, that, yeah. yes. Um, so I'm just going to hand it over to you, Michael, to talk about uh, what you've got J.D. on the line with. Good. Thanks, Krista, and good morning, everybody. As Krista said, I'm Michael Sowers here at the Library Commission, and this is our, our Tech Talk episode this month. And um, for, for, I believe, the second year in a row, we have J.D. on uh, on New Year's Eve. J.D., is that correct? Was it New Year's Eve last year? It was the last session of the year. I'm not sure if it was New Year's Eve. Yeah, well, it was, it was, it was at least the week mm -hmm. of New Year's, and, and so, yeah, uh, you know, that, that week and, and Christmas week are always the fun times to say, hey, are you around? Can you please be on the show? <laughs> um, so, uh, J.D., last year, I remember, talked about uh, Shogus, uh, a tool that he had put together, and um, so what we've got this time is uh, talking about search engine optimization, or SEO, when it comes to WordPress. Uh, as many of you know, especially if you're from Nebraska, we, we, we here at the Commission run a WordPress installation uh, for uh, both our, our blogs here at the Commission and for a, a current uh, count of 70 public library and library system websites across the state. I want run WordPress for myself for uh, uh, several personal sites and for some other organizations. And I, I will say, by way of introduction, is JD is the guy I ask a question of when somebody asks me a question and I don't know the answer. <laughs> um, and, and this SEO stuff uh, is something we've been uh, looking at a lot lately, dealing here with uh, both personally and at the commission. So, uh, J.D., basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of hand it over to you, uh, tell us a little bit about your background for those who, who have not uh, met you, and uh, go ahead and dive right into to our topic of the day. Okay. Um, I'm J.D. Thomas. I work with Information Today, um, a publishing company in New Jersey. I manage all of our WordPress, Linux, and a lot of the Windows-based websites. I also do consulting for WordPress for small organizations and nonprofits that are trying to create a better presence on the web. Um, WordPress is open source and free to use for anyone, so it's a great place to start if you don't have a big budget, that sort of thing. Um, and out of the box, WordPress is fairly SEO friendly. By that I mean the site, the websites that WordPress creates are structured well. They um, Depending on your theme, they have all the elements you really need to get started, but they're not really social media friendly. And that's why today we're going to be talking about both the SEO and the SMO aspects, social media optimization and search engine optimization. Because SEO really focuses on out-of-the-box experience um, and having your site's content show up in search engine results and how they look and whether or not Google understands that this page is the directions to your library or this page is your hours of operation. Um, WordPress does that pretty well, but it can do better. And to do that, we're going to be talking about the WordPress SEO plugin from Yoast. That plugin only works on self-hosted WordPress sites or WordPress sites that your administrator can install plugins for. Um, Michael, do you guys have this on your um, 
available to your multi-user? Um, we just installed it for the Commission websites. We have not installed it for the libraries yet. Um, if nothing else, because nobody's really asked for it, but uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes after today. <laughs> okay, hopefully um, it'll be available for people who want to use it, because this really lets you take fine, detailed control of everything. I mean, literally everything, and I'll walk you through all that. Um, to install the plugin, it's pretty easy. If you've got your own WordPress site and you're self-hosted, just go to your install plugins, option on the left, search for WordPress. SEO by Yoast, and click the install button. I already have it installed on this site, so I'm not going to do that. But um, if your site doesn't allow you to do this kind of installs, you may have to download the plugin um, as a zip file and upload it through the system, or you may even have to FTP it up. It depends on how your WordPress site is implemented at the server level. Um, before we actually look at the plugin, I want to show you what links look like when they're shared to places like Facebook um, when they're not optimized. And I'm going to use the Library Commission post for that. Um, there's a post here called What's Salary Reading? And if we look at the way the metadata on the page on the post looks. Oops, hold on. I'm going to the wrong one. We can see that there's no description. Let me bump this up a bit so you can read this. Um, there's no, um, sorry, let me scratch it. this wrong page. <laughs> um, okay. So this is that post shared to Facebook. And what I wanted to show you is that that page does not look like a regular link the way they look if you share them when it's fully um, optimized. And the reason this page shows up this way is because these images are tiny. So Facebook can't spread it across the top of the link and it has to kind of fill in the gap here. This is what most stuff looked like on Facebook two years ago, three years ago. Um, but they've changed since then and they've given you more options to let your let you make your post stand out more and be more engaging. So let's go back to the plugin. <laughs> it's I'm just worried that I'm not going to have time to go through it all, so I want to go back to here. On the WordPress plugin itself, once it's installed, you have all these options that I'm showing here on the left. First thing you want to look at is your titles and metadata. And this is key if you're running WordPress as a blog. One of the drawbacks with WordPress as a blog is that the um, home page is constantly changing. Um, that's why I was at the Encompass blog earlier to look at it. So on this home page, there's several posts, and when you share this page to Facebook or on Twitter or any place else that's doing searching, it's going to change every single time if there's been a new post going along. But it doesn't have to. If you go to the Home tab here, you can actually specify the title of your website um, for the home page, which I'm using just my site name, and you can specify the um, description that will appear. So no matter what, if somebody shares the home page of my website, no matter what post is recent or what post is up there now, it will always look like this when shared to Facebook. And you can do the same thing to set your defaults for all your different post types, for different pages. Um, the gray area here media, we're going to get to that later. And if you have any custom post types, they'll also appear on here. This is important if you've got people that don't take the time to or don't have the time or don't have the inclination to create these descriptions themselves when they post things, this lets you set default so at least you have, you know, a um, something there so it's not empty. And I want to show you on here some variables that are available to you. Um, if you click on help in the upper right corner and click on basic variables, you'll see a lot of stuff that can be filled in for you on the fly. Like, for example, if I take my post description, Sorry, my um, meta description template for my post types. If I have that set as the category description, no matter what, if I haven't overridden it on an actual post, it'll at least show the category description with it, so it'll have some idea of what the post is about if it's shared. Um, 
this doesn't tend to play to me because I'm kind of, um, you know, retentive about this stuff, so I always fill in this stuff on my own. You can also use this, uh, these options to hide the SEO features from post types. Um, I wouldn't do that. There's kind of no reason to. <laughs> Um, let me save this real quick. And in addition to the post types, you can do the same thing for your categories and your tag descriptions. These are for posts that are um, pages on WordPress that are automatically generated based on posts. So if we take a look here at um, here these categories that are used for education and training. So this is all the blog posts on the Encompass blog categorized as education and training. If we set the WordPress SEO category description, we can actually include that. So if somebody shares this page, they get a real um, description of that type, of that content, um, rather than just the most recent posts at the top of the page, which you know could be anything at that particular moment. Let me show you here. So, so JD, let me. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, no, that's fine. I'm just, I'm kind of, kind of, I'm, I'm kind of thinking this through uh, because I have this plugin myself, and like I said, we have it at the commission, but we're not really taking complete advantage of everything. But so, in most cases, we writing, let's let's say, um, we'll use random library, Acme library. Um, they've set it up so that when they write a new post it will share that post out to Facebook and in that case it will pull the title of the post and it will pull the description of the post and that's what you want it to do. But what we're looking at here is if then um, a, a patron wants to share the home page of the library, which is a blog, if you don't set this it will pull content from whatever the current first post is Whereas setting this stuff will override it, so it's basically more saying like, "This is the library's website." I'll show you. Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure, like, I'm I'm understanding what those those settings do. So right now, if we were to share the library commission's homepage for the blog, the blog right? This is what we that's this is what we get. It's not very meaningful. Okay. Um, if you specify that information down here in this section, this is what would appear no matter what was on the home page at the time it was shared. Okay, got it. Okay, and then the taxonomy pages, um, these are the archive pages like I showed you, like this page. You know, you're looking at the category archive. So if you actually specify a category description like I've done for these two categories, it would actually show that description when that category was shared. And there's lots of these variables you can play with. Um, the basic ones are the ones that matter most. These are the ones that you can just, you know, use in this way if you go and update a category at a later time, you don't have to go back in here and change change your stuff. So what do I have under other? Oh, for author archives you can do the same thing. Um, date archives, these sort of things. Um, so I think that covers the titles. Um, I'm going to, at the end of this, I'm going to share a link. There's actually, it's on my homepage at www.techfund.org. There's a bunch of links there that give you more information about the stuff I'm talking about. The, um, one of the key ones there that I recommend everyone read is on titling. Titling your pages um, has a huge effect on both your um, search engine optimization and how engaged people are when they see it on um, social media. That's that tips on page titles. It's excellent. So after the titles in there, we have our social data. And this is where WordPress SEO from Yoast excels above anything else out there. There's nothing that compares to this. Um, people who've used WordPress for a long time tend to have, you know, their favorite SEO plugins, their favorite stuff, but nothing out there does what this does out of the box so easily. Um, if you look here, you can see at the top there's three tabs, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And for each one, you can check whether or not to include that metadata on the, um, um, in the posts and pages. Now, I'm going to actually not be talking about the Google+, one, because since this plugin came out, Google+, 
has kind of gone back from using the schema.org markup metadata, which I'm not going to get into what that is, but um, Google Plus now is using Open Graph, which is the same thing that LinkedIn and Plug and Facebook use. So whatever you specify for Facebook is what's going to show up on Google Plus, even if you say you want something different, um, which is sad, but it works. <laughs> so for Facebook, this is the same kind of thing we were just talking about under the titles and metas for the home page. This stuff here, but under Facebook, this is what we specify for how uh, for what we want to appear when somebody shares the home page to um, Facebook. And that includes an image. Like I chose to use this image, just um, can't really see it. <laughs> um, but there's an image here, and we're going to get into sizing later. But that image is um, just a generic one that has my blog's URL on it and a little WordPress screenshot. Um, I use the same image down here for the default. This way, if I don't use an image in a post, I'm just quickly posting a couple of sentences on the fly. I don't have time to, to find the right picture to use for that I can legally use. Um, it'll default to that. Okay. Um, JD, I'm going to ask you another question right here. Uh, because th this, this is the issue we've been dealing with lately. And so if, if, if you can't tell us what we're missing in a sentence or two, I don't want to completely derail your presentation. Uh, mm -hmm. But we we installed this because there were there were times where an image wasn't being included in a blog post and it was pulling kind of an image from the footer of our theme, so we've kind of created a a default image to be used when an image is not in the post. So exactly the situation you just described. Um, what we've noticed though in in the, in the last week or so is. That image is working if somebody is logged into Facebook, but if they're not logged into Facebook and they look at the post, it, it, Facebook like displays a blank area instead. Are, are you familiar with this at all? No, I've never seen that. Okay, well then I will talk to you completely separately about that. Then. Sure, yeah, I'll have to look at it under a, um, yeah, if you send me a link, I'll look at it in the browser. Okay, all right. Now, now, did you specify your, um, did you use an image size similar at least in these dimensions, what I'm showing you. Right. Because that will affect it. Okay. Um, you know, if, the, if the image is too large, you won't show. Actually, that's what it is, though. Um, if the image is too large in terms of a file size, it won't show to non logged in users. Well, it, 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 I can definitely tell you it was not larger than what you've just highlighted there. So. Okay, good. So, okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Okay, sure. So this is the Facebook stuff. Um, how you want stuff to appear. Twitter is more fun. Now, I don't know if people are familiar with Twitter cards. Twitter cards are little representations of the content in the link that's shared via Twitter. And it has two modes of WordPress supports, summary with large image and just a summary. I'm going to show you examples of that here. This is just a regular summary of this link. So it's got a title, it's got my name, my Twitter handle. Um, the description and a little picture. This version is the same information, same post, well, slightly different actually, but this is the large image representation. So it gives you a lot more room to have a big picture that people like. People like pictures. Um, the Twitter information we have here and then a description. Um, and I'll show you where all this stuff came from. So this is a post that I posted. It's actually called Social media image sizes December 2014. But when that link is shared on Twitter, it actually says optimal Twitter image sizes because I'm talking to people on Twitter. The Twitter information is there as well as Facebook. So when I share it on Twitter, it talks about Twitter. When I share it on Facebook, it talks about Facebook. Um, this is that same image, the same link shared on Facebook. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now, to have Twitter cards work, you have to enable this here, this, and you also have to validate your website's URL through the Twitter card validator. It's not too hard to do if you just take the URL of a web page on your site, run it through the preview. It'll show you what it'll look like, this. And in my case, it's already whitelisted here. 
all techfund.org domains are whitelisted for Twitter um, cards. If you do one that is not validated, let's I think you can probably take um, this one. It should prompt us to validate it. Okay, so here it's telling us that it's got information here to build a Twitter card. No image is the right size for it, so it's not going to show up. But um, this, the NLC blog.nebraska.gov is not whitelisted. So, Michael, at some point you want to do this. Just do request approval. It's going to ask you a few questions and notify you when it's ready. I, I just put it on my to-do list. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so yeah, once that's done, then your Twitter cards will show up like this. Until it does, you'll just get the link here with with none of the information below. Okay, and like I said, Google Plus. Oh, um, the site Twitter username here. If you're the only person working on your site, just put your stuff there. If you're in an organization like the library system, you want to put the library's Twitter account here, and then in your individual profile, um, you're going to put your own Twitter account. This way, it knows that you wrote the particular article for the site. And on Google Plus, all there is there is a spot for a Google Publisher page. I don't use this because it's for my personal site, but if you actually have a Google Plus page, just put the URL there. But again, the Twitter, the Google Plus specific metadata doesn't really work. Um, used to, doesn't anymore. Now, XML sitemaps are an awesome feature of WordPress, um, GS WordPress SEO. This is a feature this feature is actually what got me to switch to this plugin um, once upon a time because it was built in. It used to be if you wanted to have an XML sitemap for your site, you needed to use a separate plugin for it. This way, it's all in one. Um, what an XML sitemap is, is essentially a directory in XML format of all the content on your website. All your posts, all your pages, all your individual photos, um, categories, tags, and Sitemap is used by Yahoo, um, Ask.com, Google, um, pretty much every search engine out there now uses this to, to help them maintain a directory of what's on your site. So when they see something new, they know it's time to go to Michael Sauer's blog and find this page, index it, and add it to our search engine databases. Um, there's a link on that page of links that I'm going to show you later that tells you how to submit your sitemap to Google Webmaster Tools. This is an awesome way of making sure that Google knows about everything that's on your site. And also, you can find out from that tool whether or not there's problems. Like if it sees like there's five URLs in your sitemap, but they're not reachable by Google, something's wrong. And you might want to check in on that. Um, links are not very important, but there's a couple of things I do use this for. I remove stop words from slugs. The slug is this part of the URL right here. And they can get pretty long because WordPress spaces them on the title of your post. So if you'll see here, well, <laughs> bad example, there's no um, sitemaps here. But the um, stop words are things like A, B, and um, get for those because they're not of any value to you SEO wise in the URL, but your keywords are. So it kind of compacts it down, makes it a little bit um, easier to index for the search engines. And the other feature, this this is very important if you have a lot of images on your site. Um, Google image search is becoming very popular, very an important source of traffic for some sites now because. Google's really gotten, gotten the hang of linking this photo to this article. The um, problem with WordPress is each attachment each on your website, each photo, um, podcast, every media element has its own web page generated automatically by WordPress. However, if you check the box here where it says redirect attachment URLs to parent post, parent post URL, WordPress will automatically redirect those pages to the parent post. So, you know, you guys have a, you know, there's a big event and you post pictures for your Christmas party. 
If those pictures are indexed by Google Image Search, when somebody clicks on you know, the picture of your punch bowl, rather than going to a page just showing a picture of your punch bowl, they go to your blog post or article about the party. Um, this helps you get people to the right place. Um, were you say Michael? Yeah, I, yeah, JD. No, I got the question. Just backing up a, a sec to the to the removing stop words from slugs. Um, I get it, but what's the benefit? Shorter URLs. Okay. <laughs> that, that that's the key benefit. Shorter URLs. Now, and keyword density in a URL. That's a, kind of a complex thing. I wasn't planning on sure. going into. Okay. Um, the your URL. We talked about this actually with the show this thing. There are various places on your page that matter a lot um, for SEO purposes because they're not spoofable, really. Your page title, there can be only one. Um, Highlander. Um, there can be only one page title, so what you say in there is more important than what you say in the body of the article. Because the article could be talking about five or six different topics, but whatever you put in the, sub, in the title tag, that's presumed to be the main over, overall topic. Right. And your URL goes hand in hand with that. If you are doing a blog post about, I don't know, cutting diamonds, but you don't mention diamonds are cutting in the URL, it's going to assume that it's not, it's it's not going to rank as well for you know diamond cutting. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. But the stop words just just make the URLs longer, and they stop, they they reduce the density of your keywords. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you don't, if you don't get rid of the stop words, you can have a slug that's actually, you know, when you cut the dashes, it's ten words long. You know, it'd be better if it was six. So, so basically, you're just you're you're eliminating the words that it's not going to bother indexing anyway. Correct. Uh, uh, but therefore, increases the significance of the words that are left. Exactly. Perfect. Got it. <laughs> yeah. And most people don't rewrite slugs anyway. I, I do that a lot if I want the slug to be, you know, to say a specific phrase or sentence. But in general, um, people are not going to do that. So by having the system do this automatically, it saves you a little work, saves a little um, light in your URLs. Now, the canonical settings, um, again, I'm not going to touch on any of the other things here. Most of them are not recommended, not necessary, and are only for weird specific cases. Um, if your website operates under an HTTPS, you know, you're running it under SSL, you can use this tool to force all traffic from websites um, that index things to use the secure URL versus the um, insecure versus the HTTP. This, I found the only time I use this is on like e-commerce sites where I want people to always be coming in via the HTTPS um, for the um, SSL. Under the SSL certificate, because they might be transferring a, cre a credit card or password, that sort of thing. But in general, you just want to leave it as default. So whatever your website is, it'll stay that way. If you change it later, it'll change everything for you. Um, internal links. We're going to skip this um, because more and more things are handling this for you. Um, breadcrumbs are these things right up here, where it follows a path. Yeah, so there's my home page, then general information, then social media, and then this particular article. Um, those are useful for search engines because they help them understand the structure of your site. They're building kind of a visual, you know, tree like of your site, and those breadcrumbs help. But most of those are handled by the themes now. Very few modern themes don't include um, that kind of navigation because it is so important. Uh, if it doesn't, if your theme does not, there's a little code you can use down here, a little snippet to add a function from this plugin to your theme. That'll do it for you. Um, it's pretty cool. But most people don't need it. I mean, if you're, unless you're using, you know, a home written theme or something that was written, you know, in 2010, you're probably safe ignoring that. RSS, WordPress SEO plugin allows you to do a little um, tweaking to your RSS feed. Let you put some content before or after. So, you know, you can put in here. Um, well, for example, on the um, Encompass blog, you can actually put a note in here about, you know, go here to view the archive of um, past webinars, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, I put this down at the bottom this way. If the RSS feed is read by 
Yeah, so the RSS reader always has, to, has a direct link back to my home page. Uh, import and export. These are to allow you to bring in data from old prior plugins and most importantly to back up your settings. So once you've got your WordPress SEO plugin configured, export those settings. It'll come down to the zip file called settings.zip that'll let you easily re-upload it if you ever have to recover from a disaster, you change, you move to a different website, that sort of thing. And those are all the settings that we've already gone through earlier. Now, this this tool is ideal, is insanely useful for anyone who's going to install this plugin when they haven't done any SEO work in the past. It lets you bulk edit your titles and descriptions for all of your content. Um, the first page, the title, so any titles that you want, like for example, here's one I posted um, back in May. That's the title of the actual post that appears on the page, but when it was shared, I wanted it to say Merits of Quality Reaches Pennsylvania rather than, you know, that specific thing. You can do this all through your whole thing, make all your changes and save them. And then you can do the same thing over here with descriptions. You can see I actually do all my new okay, so here's one where a draft that I didn't write it, but these are all the handcrafted descriptions that I've done. If I wanted to change it, I would just write and move over here and save it. And the file editor that's built in to WordPress SEO lets you edit your robots.txt file. If you don't have one, it'll offer to create one for you. Um, this is just a very basic robots.txt file. It just tells it I want all search engines to ignore the WP admin folder of my website. I don't want anything in there indexed, which nothing should be anyway. And it lets me tell WordPress, I'm sorry, it lets me tell search engines where to find my sitemaps. It can find all five of them here and use those to index the site. And it also lets you edit your HTSS files. Um, if you've never wanted to edit your HTAccess file, it probably means you shouldn't. You can do things in here to seriously damage the um, website and take it down entirely. And, and we'll, we'll um, second that uh, <laughs> statement. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you know what you're doing, it's an extremely powerful tool, but it's also you know kind of touchy. Um, one wrong line here can cause your website to actually literally crash and give an error message and not load for anybody. Um, some of the stuff is, well, we're not even going to go there. And finally, there are some extensions you can get for, the, for this plugin. These all cost money. The premium SEO feature gets you um, tech support for this plugin. This, is a, this plugin is released through WordPress Codex with no support. There's a forum on there that you can ask people questions, and there are a lot of um, people willing to answer you. But if you want paid support, you need the premium version. If your site is basically videos, this verse, this extension lets you um, optimize your pages for videos. So if, say you share the page to um, Facebook, the actual player with the video would show up on there the way it does if you share a YouTube video or something from Vimeo. News SEO is strictly for news sites. It allows you to create um, the extra metadata that Google News wants from publishers to help them index news articles on sites. The only one I think might be of interest to libraries would be the local SEO. Um, this lets you kind of connect your website to the Google Map system. It helps um, make sure that your data is in the right format for Google Maps to pick up that, you know, at 123 Main Street, this is your library. And kind of makes that little connection there. You can do it in other ways, but this makes it easier. I'm not sure if you were paying for it. It really depends on <laughs> whether or not you need it. Um, and that's pretty much it for the extension. Do you have any questions before I get out of the um, WordPress SEO? Um, yeah, I'll just let, uh, remind everyone at this point, because I know he's going to kind of uh, switch gears a little bit here. If you've got any questions, please feel free to raise your hand, which we would love for you to do. <laughs> uh, we'd love to hear your dulcet tones. Um, or you can type into the Q and A, uh, and we'll we'll do that. Um, We've had nothing so okay, far. just to give people a chance to type, and and I think I'll, I'll maybe I'll ask this question here. 
Okay, so you've kind of gone through all those settings. Um, I know at least a lot of our users for, for, for the libraries, uh, I, obviously there's a range of, of do, willing to do lots of individualized work, and we have a website. If, if you were going to, like, install this, what are, like, the three things you would say, these are the, the boxes you should check, if nothing else? Okay. Um, the titles and metadata, getting your defaults in here, because if the person is doing nothing, then you need to have this in here. Okay. Um, that's number one. Um, I would say the social stuff, because sharing this out to the world is not just your staff thing. You may have um, patrons, just any visitor that comes along and wants to share it, at least help them share it nicely. <laughs> So, you know, putting in the front page settings, enabling the, the metadata for the different social networks, those are important. And then finally, the last thing I would say that's critical, if you're not already doing it, is the XML site map. Um, it makes a huge difference. I've seen websites that had, you know, three or 400 pages between posts and pages with only, you know, 30 or 40 of them indexed by Google. Enabling the site maps within a month or two, they were all indexed or at least all but a couple. Just makes a phenomenal difference. Because you're you're meeting search engines halfway. You're not telling them, hey, I've got stuff here, try to find it. You're actually saying, okay, here's how to get to this, here's how to get to this, here's how to get to this. So those are the three that I would do. Okay. Better. Great. Uh, any questions from the audience, Krista? No, no, not yet. Okay. All right. So <laughs> uh, I guess it's all making sense to everybody. Yeah. So <laughs> all right, uh, let's let's uh, what do you got next? Okay, next I was going to go, before we, I'm going to actually show you how this works on an individual post, but before that I just wanted to touch on the image sizes, because before you start your post, if it's, you know, something you're working on, um, you should, you know, already have an idea, you should assemble your materials before you start writing in WordPress. You should have, you know, your image, if you're going to be using image or multiple images, you should have, um, you know, all the content ready. So. There are some sizes that matter. To share it very, to share it best on Facebook, you're going to want an image that's 1,200 by 627 pixels. Now, that's very precise. It doesn't have to be that precise. You're looking for that dimension. It's you know almost twice as wide as it is tall. If you use something that's not like that, Facebook is going to grab the middle of the picture. So if you did a 1,200 by 1,200 pixel square thing it's going to cut off the top and bottom. Um, a third off the top, a third off the bottom, sorry, a quarter off the top, a quarter off the bottom, and show you the middle section. So if you know that what you care about is in that middle section, that's perfectly fine. But if you've got the time, make it 1,200 by 627. This size is magic because it works beautifully on the Facebook mobile devices. Um, it works perfectly on the website. It just works. Twitter has its own thing. Twitter prefers your your photos, <coughs> excuse me, to be 506 pixels by 253. Now again, this is a ratio that matters more than the actual dimensions. As long as it's a minimum of 440 pixels wide, it'll work on Facebook. Um, I mean on Twitter. Twitter advertises a maximum of um, 1024 pixels wide. It's not true. I'll tell you right now, they say that. But I've seen them show plenty of stuff that was much, much bigger and just scale it down. I think they just put that there because they prefer that you not go over that because then they have to resize it for you. So this shared image link size here is what you're going to want to use in your WordPress post. And then the same thing for the Twitter photos for your large image, um, for your Twitter cards. And you can also see those here. This image is much bigger than 1024 by 768, or sorry, 1024 by 512, but it worked anyway. So, keeping those sizes in mind, we're going to now go to a post, and I'm going to show you the one that I use as an example here because it has the different um, social media options customized. So here's the actual post, and then below a post, once you've got this plugin installed, you're going to see this. Um, you're going to see a general page analysis tab, advanced, and social. The page in the, the general tab starts with a snippet of what, if you look at this, it looks like a Google or a Bing search result, and that's what it's meant to look like. It's 
going to kind of give you an idea of what people are going to see in search results. So you want to make sure it looks nice. The second option is your focus keywords. Now, whatever your page is about, whatever you think people should be searching in Google to find you, um, So if we're going to look for Michael Sowers, it's going to tell us whether or not we've done a good job of um, optimizing the page for people searching for Michael Sowers. And we have not. We're not using it in the heading. We're not using it in the title. We're not using it in the URL. We're not using it in the content. We're not using it anywhere. But for what we were using, we're fine. I, I'm, I'm happy to be a bad example um, in this case. This is just a quick... <laughs> Um, just try it on yours, actually, see if people can find you easily from your home page. Um, but yeah, so we're, we want this, I want this image, I want this post to show up when people search for social media image sizes. So I want to make sure that I have it in all the places that search engines look, which is the article heading, which is this right here. It's also the title. It's also the page title, um, although you can use a different one here to specify it. I'll show you that. Um, it's in the page URL. I actually made sure that social media image sizes is in my slug. And it's in the content. It's right up here. And it's in my description down here. This matters because people don't search for individual words. The whole keyword idea that used to be prevalent in SEO um, is wrong. It was fine for a while, but people used it to gain the system, and Google dropped it, Yahoo dropped it, Bing dropped it. Nobody cares about your keywords anymore. And people don't search for individual words very often. They search for phrases. They, you know, um, Nebraska Library Commission, they search for that. They don't search for Nebraska and then library and then commission. So you want to make sure that your focus keyword here is really a phrase what you think people should search for. So when filling out this page, this general tab, this is stuff that if you only do one thing when doing a post, do this page. If you don't put in an SEO title here, it'll just pick it up from the page. See, you read the title up there. But I actually wanted mine to say something a little different. So it just has this updated for 20, December 2014. Your meta description, if you don't fill this in, it's going to grab, WordPress SEO will automatically grab the first um, 150 characters or so of your post. And that's okay sometimes, but if you're doing a post that's, you know, covering several different topics, and the first item is just one of four topics you're covering, then definitely take the time to put a description in here that will show people what is being covered. Then go to the page analysis. This looks through your page and tells you whether or not there's problems. Um, one of the things it's telling me I have a problem with is I don't have any subheadings using my keyword. That's okay. I don't want one in this case. Um, my keyword density is kind of low. Keyword was found two times in the post. And I don't have any images on the page that contain alt tags containing the keyword or phrase. Um, again, this goes back to the fact that Google image search is becoming very popular. If you do have photos on your page, make sure that you have alt tags for them, captions, um, that sort of thing. It'll help. And then it gives you the slice reading um, ease test um, and tells you whether or not your page is going to be you know, too complicated, too complex. You have a lot of long sentences. You have a lot of um, big words. I don't write to that. I don't worry about what that says, but I kind of like knowing <laughs> you know, that it's considered OK to read. I feel better. Um, then it just tells you whether or not your keyword or phrase appears in those various places that we looked at over here. Um, it's worth reading about. I mean, I don't necessarily go back here and make changes based on this, but it's just more information to help you understand how your page is going to be seen on the web. The advanced tab, um, this can actually be disabled for um, individual users if you're using multi-site, uh, multi-user system. You may not want everybody to have access to this because it's got some pretty powerful stuff. 
um, controls the individual pages um, indexing. Like I can tell Google that I don't want this to index. So if I had a page that would say um, phone numbers for staff members, I might not mind it being publicly on the page because it's their business numbers, but I don't necessarily want it to be indexed. Um, that's a bad example, but I'm sure you can think of things that you'd rather not show up in Google search results. Um, we're not going to talk about follow, no follow. That's a whole controversial thing. Um, you can also do a few extra things, like exclude your page from the um, open directory and from Yahoo. These just um, are not things I deal with. I, I want my site, I want my content to show up everywhere. <laughs> Um, if you're using the breadcrumbs feature I showed you earlier, you can set up a different title here to show up in that breadcrumb spot. That's what would change this particular text. And whether or not to include the page in the sitemap is auto detect based on your settings we looked at earlier. Again, you know, you may have a page that you don't want to be in the sitemap because you don't want it to be indexed. This over lets you override it. Um, sitemap priority, we didn't talk about that earlier in the um, XML sitemap features, but sitemaps, the schema uses a ranking from 0 0.1 to 1 um, for priority. So if you've got a um, website with pages that change frequently and pages that don't change, that's where this comes into play. Um, if you've got a page that say your quote of the day and it's a different quote every day, set that to highest priority because it's going to be changing every day. If you've got a page that Essentially, you know, an archive list of, list of um, you know, old events, that's probably a low priority. It's probably not going to change all that often. Um, your default is 0 0.8. Um, and then your default for um, individual pages and, pages and posts is um, 0 0.6. And these are recommendations that you're passing on to search engines. They're not going to be necessarily followed exactly. Um, canonical URL. This you generally want to leave this blank. Um, in situations where you're posting content in multiple places, search engines like Google particularly will penalize you for that because they see you as you know, copying somebody else's content. By putting in that original sources URL here, like say I took an article that, um, say I took this post right here, you know, because I'm speaking here, and I took this post and I reproduced it entirely on my page. I copied and pasted this into a new post. I could go into that post and put that in the canonical URL. And when Google re searches my page, it'll know that I'm not claiming credit for that. I'm saying that this post over here at nclblogs.arescue.gov is the source of this, and I don't get punished. Um, you can also do this um, within your own site. So if you're if you've got um, an item that's posted under both events and children's events, you could make one decide which one's the master, you know, which one's the primary, and then when you repost it elsewhere, just specify a link to the original one. And then if a page question. Yeah. Um, oh, good. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> I turned to my mic. Um, okay. I I get the canonical URL. Thank you for explaining that. That that, that helps me a lot. Um, and you're saying Google won't penalize you, and we'll just use Google as our example here. Does Google do anything with that information besides not penalizing you? Is it like is it completely behind the scenes, or does it? It's behind the scenes. It okay. Doesn't it doesn't prevent that page from being indexed? But it will never let your page rank higher than the original source. Ah, okay, good. There we go. Okay, so it's not necessarily obvious to the searcher, but but it does have an impact in the rankings. Right. Like for example, if you if you did a search using you know the you know how to use the site tag in search in Google, so you can search only the contents of your site. Yes. yes. Well, if you do that, and even though your canonical URL is pointing to a site that's not your site, that page will still show up. Oh, interesting. Okay. But if you were to search for, you know, a phrase that's in there, your site will always be lower than the original. Wow. Okay. Now, uh, to which I will also add, being the good librarian, that we necessarily shouldn't uh, just copy and paste other people's content and <laughs> list a canonical URL. Please at least give credit, if nothing else, and consider all copyright implications. Okay. Continue. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, the other thing is, you know, <clears throat> 
Google punishes you for copying. And they, they, there was a problem several years ago where Google was infiltrated with what were called scrapers. People were taking content from other sites and publishing whole new sites on it and throwing ads in it. And it, it was a huge mess. There's been several things that have happened in the last couple of years, updates to um, Google system that prevents that from happening. But Google ended up penalizing a lot of people that they didn't really want to penalize because they were, you know, a situation like that, a library where it's using, um, you know, content from a state organization at the local level and vice versa. Right. So they implemented this system. This is what, you know, this is your get out of jail free card. Well, it lets you duplicate the content without um, looking like you're a flying, well, you know, looking like you're um, mm -hmm. cheating. Well, and, and in trying to come up with a reason I would ever use this, I, I kind of, your example is it, for example, for this show, the canonical URL would be what Krista writes on the commission site, but I might copy and paste it because it's my episode of the show to my own personal blog. I would want to make the commission sites the canonical. Uh, and in that case, I'm, I'm completely okay in copying the content, um, but making sure that the, the commission version is the more official version of it as the original because that's where we really want people to end up anyway. Exactly. Now, there's also a, a okay, probably shouldn't say this. But there's a trick that if you follow the follow the discussions on what Google is doing, because Google's not exactly um, transparent when it comes to their <laughs> algorithms. Um, there's also a some people believe, let's just say that, that if you throw the reproduced material inside of a block quote tag, you won't be penalized. Just well, I, I I block quote a lot, but I also generally block quote like a paragraph. I don't, and then link, right. and then the link back original. to the original. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what the, that's what it's meant to be. That's what people should. Oh, okay. Do. But you know, there are people that will throw up stuff and you know throw a block quote around it. I, I actually have editors for you know publications that I deal with that that are under that mistaken idea that it's okay if it's in a block quote. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I would argue reproducing a whole thing under a block quote is more of a copyright problem than a search engine problem, so don't do it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's the thing. There's multiple reasons. Not. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Okay, and, and, and the last thing on this page, and this is something that if you don't want to touch your HG access file, and you really shouldn't, um, this is your friend. If you've got a page that is has been used all over Facebook, all over Twitter, but it just doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't need to exist. Um, you've got a program that was phenomenally popular for a few years and it's wound down, but that page is out there. If you use the 301 redirect here, you can send the people anywhere. And I'm going to show you that with this post. So if I tell this page that I wanted to actually go to there, and let's update that. So for right now, if I go to my home page and I click on that article right here, I end up here. Um, you don't normally, you wouldn't normally be doing this to throw somebody to a different website <laughs> like this, but um, you can. Usually you'd be doing it to send people to a higher level on your site. So, you know, if there's a page that's for a program that's been discontinued, instead of people getting that page and getting confused, you could use that, keep that same URL alive because it's out there, but send people instead to a list of your programs. Um, understand? Pretty clear. Yeah. Yep. Um, and it will also tell search engines, the 301 there tells us that it's been permanently moved. It's not a temporary thing. The site's not, you know, experiencing problems that from now on, whenever somebody wants to go to this URL, they should be going to this URL. And your browser will take care of all that for you. This is all done at the server level, so it has nothing, it doesn't matter what browser the person's using or anything. And this is the last section of the um, plugins options. This is where I did this that I was talking about earlier, where you um, can tell it that if you share the post to Facebook, I want this title and this description and this image. So I'm using this one right here that's got a head looking at Facebook. Um, when I share it on Twitter, I want to have this title and this description. I use the same description for all of them, really. But on Twitter, I wanted to use this little collage of photos. 
And I did the Google Plus thing just for this session in case it ever comes back to working like this. But for right now, this is not going to work. If I share this to Google Plus, instead of seeing this, it's going to see this because it's using open graph data. Um, and that's really it for the WordPress SEO thing. Um, I think that's it. Any questions? Um, well, I'm going to kind of kind of throw a comment in here because I've been using the, the this Yoast plugin for a little while, and and um, I I think I'm going to play around a little more with some of the settings you talked about earlier, but. I've had a similar conversation with somebody, so I kind of want to get this my opinion of this on the record, and then JD, if you've got you know an alternate or agree, I'd uh, love to hear it. Um, this second part that JD kind of went through, uh, where where you've got the the general, the page analysis, the advanced, and the social, there is a lot there, and I know a, a lot of the users of WordPress that I deal with, you know, it's enough to write a blog post, <laughs> um, and and you are adding work onto this. Um, but this plugin can get you some pretty good defaults set. And then when it comes to individual posts, in my case, I almost exclusively just quickly flip over to that social tab that you were showing right there at the end and make sure that the right picture I want showing up in Facebook and Twitter is the right picture showing up. And that maybe adds 30 seconds onto writing my blog post at the end. You don't have to set another title. You don't have to set a separate description. I've decided I want to kind of take control of those images. So it, it doesn't necessarily, I guess I want to imply to people you can take advantage of as much or as little as these options as you want. You don't have to say, well, if I install this, every time I write a blog post, I've got to spend another 20 minutes figuring all this stuff out. Correct. And I did, I left off something that, I shouldn't have. It's very important. Okay. If you look over here on the side, the featured image. Yes. My WordPress has supported featured images since I think 2.4, 2.5, um, and some themes use them. Mine does. So this featured image shows up up here behind the title. Whatever you put there is going to be the image that WordPress SEO uses for all of these things. So as long as you have a featured image. You don't have to worry about specifying anything on the social tab. Okay, you just saved me work. <laughs> yeah. So as long as you specify a featured image, and not all themes use the featured image, right. but the featured image spot is available. If you don't see it in your WordPress install, go up here to Screen Options and check Featured Image. Okay. Inter okay. Wow. Yeah, you just saved me. I, the theme I'm using only uses featured image if I select a particular post type, and if you and folks listening, if you don't know what I mean by post types, don't worry about it. Um, so that's that's inter Okay, so if I just set my featured image, unless I want a different image for Facebook or Twitter, I don't have to fill those two fields out. Correct. Wow. All Thank right. you. So this, this page I'm showing you. If I look at another post, um, one where I haven't, you know, gone all, you know, granular. This post on here. Yeah, because I've been doing and it three times. And you're this, just saying I only yeah, it once. This, see, I, I did a different one here for, I don't know what that is. Um, ah, yeah, I did a wider one here for Facebook for that post. Um, but yeah, you don't have to specify anything on the social tab unless you want to override what you're seeing here. Nice. The combination of your, of your featured image plus your title here and your description. If you are happy with that and you think that's perfectly fine on all platforms, absolutely, you're done. No need to do anything else. Cool. Thank you. Worth the price of admission. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Worth twice the price of admission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let's not go there. Uh, okay. Um, so I, you know, you've you've answered my questions. I would say you've, you've you've made my life a little easier. I like to remind people that you know we 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 will answer questions as long as there are questions. We don't we don't have a hard cutoff. Are there any at the moment? Um, no, nothing has come through. If you have a question, type into the questions section. Or if you think this was just.
everything was totally answered. Uh -huh. That's great. If you're completely overwhelmed, that's okay to do. <laughs> you can go in here. I think a lot of this is going to be go into your WordPress, play with things, see how right. they work to figure out. Yeah. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, for anybody who's listening that is doing the Nebraska Libraries on the Web Project, this is not currently installed, um, but it can be, and I can turn it on for you if you want. Um, so just drop me an email and say, yeah, I'd like to get this turned on, and I'm going to consider this the instructional video for, for said plugin, so I'm not going to create my own. I, I, I think JD's Went done right a wonderful it, job, yeah. uh, although we tend to do five-minute instructional videos, and this one's an hour, but, you know, hey, uh, there's a lot here. Um, so um, no, nothing coming in. Uh, JD, anything else you want to uh, mention or, or show us before we uh, wrap this up? Nope. Uh, I was going to mention the, our um, WordPress and Libraries Facebook group. Oh, if anybody yes. has any questions or anything, that's the best place to ask. I tend to monitor that pretty closely and answer stuff. Um, and it doesn't have to be on SEO, anything WordPress related. There's people there um, that are eager to help. Yeah, I, I've, I've used it myself trying to, trying to figure this, this stuff out. So. Um, there's there's a lot there. Okay, uh, well, JD, thank you very very much. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take control back, and I've just got one other WordPress thing I want to talk about. So uh, Chris is gonna switch our screens over here uh, and uh, bring up uh, WordPress there. Yeah, yeah, face uh, Firefox. Excuse me, but it is WordPress. Um, so here's just the one thing I want to talk about briefly, uh, mainly for the benefit of those of us uh, using uh, Nebraska Libraries on the web. We are currently running uh, WordPress 4, uh, and WordPress 4.1 is available, and I, we will be upgrading to that probably early next week, if nothing else, because I don't want to make changes and leave down uh, for a long weekend. Um, so right now, this is just an example post on, uh, on Nebraska Libraries on the website. What I want to show you real quickly here is here is an image, and what people have been familiar with, if I click on this image, is this pencil and the X. The X deletes the image where the pencil takes you into the image detail where you can change things like align, uh, size, and what you're linking to. And this is what we've been familiar with. Uh, the one change I've noticed in WordPress 4.1, which I'm showing you here on a uh, image uh, on a website, on my own personal website that's running 4.1, so when you click on the image, they've actually added some new icons to that. So you have the X for remove and the pencil for edit, which does take you into the image details. But the coolest thing I found is they've added the four buttons to change the images <clears throat> excuse me, alignment right here. So you can change to align left, align center, align right, or no alignment uh, kind of in a single one-click result as opposed to having to go into the edit image, change the alignment, and click update. So they've removed some clicks. Very, very handy, I found, where you've, you've put that image in your text and you put it in the wrong place and you just want to change that alignment. So there's the one extra new WordPress thing that uh, I wanted to add to this, and I will probably chop this out and make it its own little uh, instructional video for our project website. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and declare this tech talk over, unless <laughs> any other questions have come in while I was talking. Chris will do a quick check of that, uh, and I'm thinking, nope. nope. All right. Uh, so Krista, I'm going to uh, hand it back to you to wrap this, the uh, episode up. Cool. All right, great. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, JD. That was very, uh, like I said, lots of information, but very helpful, and I think very detailed, like, you know, mm -hmm. the showing where everything was, I think. Like I said, get into your WordPress sites, play around with it, explore it. Once you start using it, you'll see what it can do, and I think that'll really make things kind of click yeah. with people. So, all right. Okay. So that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, it has been recorded, so it will be available on our website down here in our archived Encompass Live Sessions page. Um, we'll have links recording and any of the web things that were mentioned, um, JD's page, all of his links I've got there, WordPress, um, anything related. Um, so that will wrap, wrap it up for today. If I hope you'll join us next week when our topic is extreme customer service at your library. That better. <laughs> extreme. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, Kearney Public Library here in Nebraska has done some, made some big changes to how they're doing customer service, basically a whole change in philosophy at the library. And the director, Matt Williams, and assistant director, Christy Walsh, will be here online with us from Kearney to talk about what they've done at their library. Cool. Yeah. 
Um, so I hope you join us for that. Any of our other future shows. Also, we are on Facebook, as we were talking about Facebook. Uh, so if you do have any, um, if you are a Facebook user, go ahead and like us there. You'll get notifications. As you can see here, I remind you when the new show is coming out, when recordings are available. Um, so you'll be able to keep up on what we're doing on Encompass Live via our Facebook page. Than that, we are good to go. Thank you very much, and we'll uh, see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.